Tables are a very useful data container for working with financial data. They've personally saved me a tremendous amount of time, so I'd like to share this functionality with you. Suppose I have the following portfolio of bonds consisting of text, dates, numeric information, and even missing information. And I'd just like to bring this data into my workspace so I can do some analysis with it. Since tables are well supported in the MATLAB environment and part of core MATLAB, I can bring in the data using interactive tools like this one, which will automatically analyze my data, convert the dates for me, and handle all the missing information just fine. So I can bring it in with a click of a button. And I'd just like to mention that if you've been using data sets, much of the same functionality is also supported by tables. So we see here that we brought in about 4,300 different bonds, about two megs in size, and it's all stored in one nice convenient data container. But when the time comes we want to drill into this data, we can use other interactive tools like the variable editor to uh, explore our data, uh, manipulate the data. For example, if we want to go ahead and maybe adjust some of the columns around, uh, we can go ahead and sort the data, even convert different data types here. The point being that this interactive interface allows us to quickly edit our data. And on top of that, by converting the different data types, we've also been reducing the size of our data set by about a factor of six, effectively allowing us to manage our memory footprint without having to do any type of real work. And since tables work real nicely with the MATLAB environment, I can go ahead and look at the parts of the data that are important to me and explore that data. Being able to quickly identify patterns, such as clustering or trends, and do this all interactively makes me more productive at the end of the day. And since scrubbing data, combining data, making sure it's all in the right format is a big part of data sanitation, suppose we have another uh, table that we want to combine with our data that has, in this case, some sector information. You notice it's a different size table here that has uh, the different tickers and the different sectors associated with those different tickers. And all we'd like to do is just simply take the sector information and append it to our original bond data here. So how do we go about joining these two different tables together? Well, let's find out what type of functionality tables provides us with by exploring the documentation. You can see here that there's a function called join. Looks like it allows us to join two different tables together. So we can go ahead and use this. But I'd also like to mention that there's so much more functionality that tables can provide you with that I really uh, encourage you to uh, explore the documentation of tables. Before I use join, I'd just like to mention that all these point-click operations that we've been doing have been captured in the command window so that when we want to automate our processes and create custom analytics, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So let's go ahead and use uh, join here to maybe combine our bonds data with our sector data right here and combine it based on maybe the ticker column, which is in both of those two different tables. And in this case, I just want to append this, uh, this sector information directly onto our bonds table. So now that we've joined the data and it's in the right format, perhaps maybe we want to go ahead and investigate the data. And to really drive home the point of how easy it is to really start to analyze your data, we can use nice, clean, uh, simple syntax such as the following to pull out maybe where the ticker is only equal to GM. So in this case, we're looking inside our bonds data, where the ticker is equal to GM, and only pulling out the description, the rating, and the sector columns out of our data. So when we do that, we see that we've pulled out all these different ratings here. They're all for General Motors, as we might expect. And in this case, it's consumer discretionary, which is the same because the obligor is all the same here. In this case, we were finding rows that were equal to General Motors, but we could have just as easily used this very powerful syntax to you know, search by date, group by rating, and so forth. So that it's a very flexible uh, syntax for any type of needs that you may have. And tables really are a convenient data container for any type of analysis, math, and operations. So for example, if I want to calculate maybe the bond yield, I can just simply pass in the different columns directly into my function. And I can use shortcuts like, for example, a tab to automatically find the columns that are important for performing my analysis. And tables really are great because one data container keeps all of our data together. However, when the time comes, 
and you want to pull out just a portion of your data, you can easily do that uh, so that you can leverage all the advantages of tables, but yet apply any of the functions, including your own custom functions, to the data, or even just quickly visualize it. So in summary, I really encourage you to check out tables. They're extremely powerful and well-suited for dealing with uh, financial data. And since it integrates well with the MATLAB platform, there are lots of interactive tools that you can leverage, uh, making you more productive and saving time when you're automating your processes. Thank you.